Hello and welcome to today's video where we will be showing you how to manage a print-on-demand business on monday.com in 2024. Print-on-demand is a dynamic business model that turns digital designs into tangible products only after a customer places an order. From custom t-shirts to personalized mugs, this model eliminates the need for inventory and reduces waste. However, managing a print-on-demand business involves a lot of moving parts, designing, order processing, production, and shipping. It might sound straightforward, but it's actually quite intricate and crucial to delivering customer satisfaction. In our fast-paced digital world, businesses are under constant pressure to produce unique, high-quality products quickly while keeping costs low. Effective management in a print-on-demand business means being able to adapt swiftly, minimize errors, and maintain excellent customer relationships. This is where a tool like monday.com comes in. It's not just about tracking orders and shipments, but monday.com enables you to see your entire operation in one place, streamline your communications, and automate routine tasks. Today, we will be diving into how monday.com can simplify the complex operation of a print-on-demand business. Okay, so if you are brand new to monday.com, go ahead and click the link down below in the description to get started with a brand new account. When you click on that link, it's going to bring you to this page here, and all you need to do is click on get started. So you can either get started with your Google work account or just whatever other email address you have. And you can just follow me along here on the sign up process. So it's going to ask you to put in your full name, a password, and an account name. Next, it's going to ask what brings you here today, whether that's work, personal, school, or nonprofits, we'll go ahead and select work. Next, it asks what best describes your current role. We'll go ahead and select business owner and continue. Next, it's going to ask how many people are on your team. We'll say two to five and one to 19 people work at our company. Then it's going to ask what we would like to manage first. We'll go ahead and select operations and hit continue. Next, it asks what we'd like to focus on first. So we're going to go ahead and select this operations process and hit continue. Lastly, it's just ask, how did you hear about monday.com? And of course, you heard it from StartupWise. So after you complete the signup process, this is exactly where you will end up. Now, to give you a brief little overview of monday.com and how to navigate it up here, we can go ahead and start at the home. And this is where you can see any of your private tasks, any recently visited boards or docs or any other workspaces inside of monday.com. And then below Below that we have the update feed or the inbox and below that we have all of the different workspaces. Now to just focus on your own work and not everything inside of monday.com you can go ahead and just click on my work and that is going to take you to the work that is just simply assigned to you. So if you have a large team with lots of projects and tasks this is going to be a really quick and easy way to just really narrow your focus onto what is specific to you. Next we have workspaces. So workspaces are kind of where everything lives within. You can create multiple different workspaces. For example, you could create one for your coffee mug print on demand business. Maybe you have a separate workspace for your sweatshirt print on demand business, for example. Or maybe you have one for designs. Maybe you have one for order management. For this example, we're just going to use a single workspace and we'll go ahead and rename this workspace. We'll go ahead and call it print on demand. And if we press these three little dots, we can go ahead and change the icon color as well as the icon. So for this, let's go ahead and we'll select this origami. That's kind of cool. Then we'll also change the color. I kind of like this light blue. And from here, you have some other settings that you can go ahead and change. And these are settings that relate to the workspace. Now, down below the workspace, again, if you were to have multiple workspaces and you click on workspace here, you would see them under my workspace. Space. But since we only have one, it's only showing that one. Inside of the workspace, we have everything that lives within that workspace. And you can see we have this one here called project management. This was just automatically created by monday.com. We're going to be starting fresh. So let's just go ahead and we'll delete that. And to create something new, we're going to go ahead and just
just hit this little blue plus sign. And from here, we're gonna create a few different boards. Now, boards are really where everything sort of happens inside of monday.com and where all of your data goes. So, like I said, we're going to create a few different boards here. We're going to create a design board, an order management board, a supplier management board, shipping and fulfillment board, as well as a marketing board. So let's go ahead and start with this first board, our design board. So we'll go ahead and call this design. And here you can go ahead and select your privacy, whether you want this to be visible to everyone in your account, whether you want it to be private or shareable. And then down below that, you can select what you are managing in this board for this designs. We're going to go ahead and select this creative options. You can also create a custom one, but I think creative fits pretty well for this design board that we're going to create. Now, the purpose of this board is for tracking the design process from conception to approval. So again, with your print on demand business, you probably have multiple different designs for the same product. For the example I talked about earlier, maybe you have a coffee cup print on design business and you have several different designs for that coffee cup. Well, this board that we're gonna create here is going to be a good spot to manage all of those different designs. So after creating this new board, we can see that it sort of auto populated a few columns for us. Now, just to give you the full experience, let's go ahead and delete all of these columns so we can start fresh. Okay, so the very first column that we're going to create is a design ID. So we can go ahead and just hit this little plus sign here to create a new column. And I'm just going to search for ID and we can see this item ID. Now this is going to create a unique identifier for each design that we create. And before we get started, I'll just go ahead and delete all these other random items in here. So again, we're just starting with a clean slate. I'm also going to get rid of this other group and we'll talk about groups here in just a minute. The next thing that we're going to add on here is the designer or the person responsible for the design. So go ahead, hit that little plus sign and select people. And then from here, you can go ahead and select who is responsible for this design. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a status. So this will be a drop down to indicate which phase the design is in. So we'll go ahead and hit status. And then if we click on this, we can see the different options. There's done, working on it or stuck. Let's customize these a little bit to be more specific to a print on demand business. So we can hit edit labels and we'll go ahead and change done to approved and then we can go ahead and select this working on it and change that to in review and change stuck to concept. And I think those colors work nicely for those different titles. Next, let's go ahead and create a priority column. So we'll hit the plus sign here and look for priority. And if we click on this again, we can see some different levels of priority. I think these are fine for now. So we'll sort of leave those as is. And next we need a due date. So we need to add some urgency in here. So let's go ahead and hit the date and we'll just rename this to due date so we can keep track of when each design is supposed to be due. And the next column that we're going to create is a file upload. So we'll go ahead and just hit the little plus sign here and we're going to look for files, which is right here click on that. And now we can upload any Photoshop files, Figma files, or whatever software you're using to design these files. Okay, so now that pretty much completes this board for this design board. Now, again, we talked about a couple different scenarios here. Again, maybe you have some different products, maybe you have some coffee cups that you create designs for, and maybe you have some sweatshirts that you create design boards, but you want to keep those separate. So let's go ahead and create a new group. So this group right now is just called group title. Let's go ahead and rename this to coffee mugs. And then we'll go ahead and create a new group and change this to sweatshirt. Go ahead and put sweatshirt designs and change this to coffee mug designs. That way we can sort of keep those separate. So let's go ahead and call this coffee mug design A. And we'll go ahead and call this sweatshirt design B. Now, something else that you can go ahead and do in monday.com is you can select, if you hover to the right of the name of an item within a group on a board, you can click this open button and it's gonna open this up on the right here. Now here you can write any updates on, in this instance, any updates on the design. And this goes out to your entire team. This is also another place where you can add any files relevant to this specific design. So that's just a good spot to keep everything in one place for each specific design in this 
example. Now let's go ahead and fill these out a little bit. So let's say that this design is a concept. Let's go ahead and add another one. We'll just call this B and we'll just call this next one C. And let's go ahead and just fill out some of this stuff. So that one's in review. This one is approved. This priority is low, high, and medium. Due date for this was B at the end of the month. Due date for this one will be then. And this one that's already done, we'll go ahead and put the due date to date because it is done. We'll go ahead and fill out some stuff here as well. We'll put approved in review. And those are both critical due date. So now that we have some of this data filled in, let's go ahead and change some of the views here because while this table view is you know, nice, it sort of looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and create some different views so we can sort of see the power of money.com. Let's go ahead and start with the Kanban board. And from here, it's going to automatically create a board based on whatever it thinks makes the most sense. So in this case, it went ahead and did it by status. So this is great, but what it's doing is it's combining all of our designs and within here we know that we have coffee cup designs and we also have sweatshirt designs so we want to be able to differentiate those and there's a couple different ways that you can do that within monday.com so we're gonna go ahead and click on settings and what we're gonna go ahead and do is right here where it says divide by we're gonna go ahead and select groups so now this is going to look a little bit more similar to that previous view if we go back to the main table where it's separated by groups but it's also got this Kanban view so you can see which ones are approved which ones are in review and which ones are just a concept. And something else that's pretty cool money.com over here is they call this a battery. So this updates as we change the status. So before we could see that there was evenly split between the approved, the in review and the concept. But if we move this over, we can see that now two thirds of that is in review. And if we move everything over to the approved, we can see that that thing is green. So just a great way to visually see sort of the status of your, in this case, designs. Now let's go ahead and look at another view here. Let's go ahead and look at a Gantt chart. So from here, you can go ahead and see all of your due dates in this case, because again, a Gantt chart is sort of based off of dates in a timeline. And the only date that we have in here is the due date. But we're sort of running into that same issue that we had before, where it's just all of the designs, but we sort of want to split them up between the coffee mugs and the sweatshirt. So let's go ahead and hit this baseline button here. I'm going to go to this group by and select group. Now, if we exit out of here, we have our coffee mug designs and then we have our sweatshirt designs. All right, so that kind of wraps up our design management board. Next, let's go ahead and create an order management board. So to create a board, again, we're just gonna come over here to this plus sign and we'll go ahead and click new board and type in order management. And for this, we'll go ahead and change custom and type in order, hit create board. Okay, to start with a fresh canvas here again, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all of these columns. And for this order management board, let's go ahead and create a order ID. So again, we'll just type in this ID. And now we have a unique ID to identify each order. Let's go ahead and create a customer name. So for now, we'll just look for a text and call this customer name. Next, let's go ahead and we'll go product type. So for this, we'll go ahead and select from a drop down and we'll call this rename that to product type and we'll go ahead and edit these labels. So in our scenario, we have a coffee mug and a sweatshirt. Next, we'll go ahead and select the design applied. So for this, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit this plus sign and we're gonna search for mirror. And what it's gonna ask us to do, it's gonna ask us to create a new connection. So what we wanna do is we wanna connect the design board to the order management board so that we can see which design was applied. So go ahead and hit create new connection. We need to select which board we want to connect. So we're gonna connect the design board, hit connect boards. And then here we're gonna select what column from the design board that we want to mirror here in the order management. So we want to mirror the item ID. And we're gonna go back and rename that on the design board to design ID. And here we'll call this design ID as well. And here we'll call this design board, just so we know. We don't really need to see that board. We'll just hit collapse on that for now. So it's just a little bit smaller. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create a column for quantity. So this would just be a number and we'll rename that to quantity for the order. And next we're gonna create an order status. So we'll select a status column and we're gonna rename these to, we'll change this green one to 
shipped. We'll change this one to printing and this one to received. Next column we're gonna create is an estimated shipping date. So we'll select date and put in estimated shipping date. And lastly, we'll go ahead and put a tracking number. So for this, maybe we'll put ID and rename this to tracking number. That way we have a unique number for this tracking number. So that pretty much wraps up our order management. Now we probably don't need this group down here, but something that we learned how to do here with this order management was how to link boards together so that we can select specific IDs. Okay, so that about wraps up our order management board. Now for the design board, we sort of took a look at the different views. And for this order management board, we learned how to connect different boards together. So again, if we come here, to this design board for this order. We can go ahead and hit that plus sign. Maybe we want coffee design A. And we'll go ahead and select that. We can see the design ID auto populates there. So this can be super powerful. Next up, let's go ahead and create a supplier management board. So we're gonna go hit the plus sign over here, hit board and type in supplier management. And here we'll go ahead and select suppliers. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and get started by getting rid of this second group. And we'll go ahead and get rid of these other two items. We'll just keep that one for now and call this supplier A. Now to just get started with a fresh canvas here, we'll go ahead and delete these other columns. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna add in here is some contact information. So the first thing we'll do is just a phone number. So they have a phone number field there. And that way it's really nice when you type in phone number it'll populate up just like that. We'll also add in an email address and yeah, that's probably good for contact information. Next, we're going to want to select the material provided. So what do we get from this specific provider? So for us, we can go ahead and just create a drop down, and we'll create coffee mugs and sweatshirts. And let's say this provider just does coffee mugs. And we'll rename this to material provided. Next, we'll go ahead and type in the price per unit. So we'll just go look for a number and rename this to price per unit. And maybe for a coffee mug, we get those for a dollar. And we want this to show as a dollar. So we'll go ahead and click here, settings, customize numbers column and select the dollar sign there. And let's create another column here titled minimum order quantity. So we'll need another number column. So click on that and type in minimum order quantity. And maybe they require 100 of those. So let's create a new custom column here to reflect the total minimum order dollar amount. So for this, we're going to want a formula and we can go ahead and select price per unit times minimum order quantity and hit, hit set formula. We're going to rename this to minimum order dollar amount. So that way, if we can go ahead and change this, so let's say this was actually 225 minimum order quantity, and we can see that that minimum order dollar amount also changes. And lastly, let's just go ahead and create one date column here for our last order date. And that about wraps up our supplier management board. Next, let's go ahead and create a shipping and fulfillment board. So go ahead, hit the plus sign over here, hit new board and type in shipping fulfillment board and we'll go ahead and hit create board. From here, we're going to go ahead and delete these columns. And the first column that we're going to create is an order ID. So we'll go ahead and rename the item ID to order ID. The next thing that we're going to select here is the shipping provider. So let's go ahead and select from drop down. And here we can edit these labels. So we could call FedEx, we'll create UPS and USPS. Here we'll create a column for package weight. So we'll go ahead and put number and name this package weight. For the settings, we'll go ahead and customize this to, or maybe we'll put that in ounces. The next column that we're gonna create is a status column. We'll go ahead and edit these, change this to delivered, change this to in transit and this last one to ready to ship. We'll go ahead and create a column here for the cost, the shipping cost. So go ahead and select numbers, shipping cost, change the settings to dollar. And then we want to create two more columns here. So this is going to be an expected delivery date as well as an actual delivery date. So we'll go ahead and hit the date. We'll go ahead, right click that date to duplicate column. And then we'll title this one expected delivery date and this one will be actual delivery 
date. Okay, and that about sums up our shipping fulfillment board. For our last board, we're gonna go ahead and create a marketing board because in order to sell anything on our on-demand business, we need to market it so that we get people to buy it. So let's go ahead and create the new board by hitting the plus sign, clicking new board and title this marketing. And we'll go ahead and select campaigns for this one. So we'll go ahead and create board. And again, as we have with all the other boards, we'll delete the current column so we can start fresh. So the first column that we're gonna create is a channel. So the different marketing channel used, whether that's social media, email, etc. So for the channel, we're gonna go ahead and select here and go to label. So for this, we're gonna go in here and edit these. We're gonna rename the column to channel. We're gonna go hit edit labels. We'll have one for email, we'll have one for Instagram, we'll have one for YouTube and maybe one for Pinterest. And next we're gonna have uh, some start dates and end dates. And so for that, we're gonna use a column called timeline. So we select timeline and then how do we use the timeline column is you just click right here and you can set the dates. So maybe we want this to run for the month of July. So we could select the first and then the 31st and then that would be the timeline for that specific campaign. Maybe the next campaign we wanna do is gonna be for the month of August. So we could select the first and then the 31st. And then what's cool with the sum feature down here at the bottom is it's going to sum up the total days and the total timeline of this this entire column, not just each individual timeline. The next column we're gonna create is a budget column. So we'll select a numbers column and rename that to budget and change the settings to dollar. And next we're just gonna put a little performance metric in here. So for this, we're gonna select a number and we're just gonna title this conversions. And lastly, we're just gonna add a text column for any notes or feedback on how this campaign is going. And we'll rename that to notes slash feedback. And lastly, let's maybe just add a person for whoever on your team, whether that's you, or maybe you have someone else on your team for whoever this campaign is assigned to. Now, let's go ahead, we'll get rid of this group down here, and then we will, we have an email campaign, a Pinterest campaign, and maybe we have a YouTube campaign. And YouTube's not coming until the month of September, so we'll go ahead and select the 1st and the 30th. And then maybe we wanna look at this in a, in a timeline view, so we'll go ahead and click here, input in Gantt. And there we go, then we can see our different marketing campaign. So this was just a basic introduction on how to get started on monday.com with a print on demand business. Now, each of these boards can be further customized based on specific business needs and preferences. Additionally, like we saw in the one example, you can link related boards to other boards. For example, the order management board with the design board and the shipping board with the fulfillment board to create an even more integrated workflow. So there you have it. As you can see, Monday.com does an excellent job at catering to a print-on-demand business. And because Monday.com is so customizable, it's really capable of fitting into whatever your business requires. Now, if you want to get started with Monday.com, there is a link down in the description. Now, this is an affiliate link, so if you do use that link, it helps out the channel and allows us to continue making free videos just like this. So if you do end up using that link, we really thank you in advance. Now, I hope this video is valuable to you guys. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like it and subscribe for more videos just like this. Here on this channel, we make a lot of how-to guides and tutorials dedicated to helping out new entrepreneurs starting their own business. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.